Hello all, I am Mani Agrawal and I have scored 126 rank in this recently declared result of UPSC CSE and I have taken maths as my optional and the reason why I am making this video is is to uh, make you realize that maths is a reliable subject as an optional and we can all uh, do well if we are uh, we have a, a background in mathematics in our graduation or post graduation. So I did my BSc and MSc in mathematics. So when I started preparing for this exam, there was no uh, no uh, choice of in t taking any other subject in my mind. And I realized that it's only maths and maths that I take. So uh, I think that uh, as far as syllabus is concerned, there are two subjects. Uh, I mean, there are two papers, paper one and paper two. And each paper has six to seven subjects. So uh, when I was in BSc, uh, I realized that around uh, out of the 14, 15 uh, subjects, I guess I completed around 10 to 11 subjects within my BSc series. And uh, secondly, uh, maths is uh, termed as very scoring subject. If you are writing the answers uh, or solving the questions fully, you will be awarded good marks. It is very scoring. But second thought is that uh, it is equally uh, hard work demanding. It is it is even more uh, demanding than many of the art subjects because you need constant practice for that. You should be able to write answers in the limited time frame and you, you should be able to solve as random questions as can be asked. So it is both scoring but also more hard work demanding. So there has to be balance and you use math as an option only if you are willing to uh, enjoy the subject and also put in as much hard work as required. And uh, from the uh, concept point of view, I think that in your uh, in your uh, BSc or in your engineering, I think that you should go for the same book set that you have studied and which uh, you are familiar with. I'm saying this because uh, once you've studied something, given exam in your graduation or or BTEC. I think that it will be very easy for you to revise those subjects as such. You will not be uh, burdened with, with reading a new book altogether. So I think that for graduation subjects that you uh, have covered in mathematics, you should go for the same books. But if you are learning a subject uh, in maths, uh, which you have not studied before, and whole new subject you are learning, then you should go for the standard books that are prescribed. I will uh, I will give you the name of the books at the end of the lecture. But uh, only for those uh, subjects, you should, you should go for the standard books, as, as far as concept clearing is concerned. But when you are, uh, there are many times which happened with me also, as I started in DU and IIT Bombay, there are certain foreign author books that were recommended in most of the, most of the colleges. So we had to study that, but our concepts were clear. So I think that uh, what I did was, uh, I stuck to the concepts of those same books in which I did my graduation and post-graduation. But I, I uh, chose those standard books for doing as many solved examples, as many questions as possible. So uh, foreign authors, uh, they don't give you much questions. There are only certain number of questions which are given in for foreign author books. Whether you take solved examples or you take exercises. So you should go for uh, the kind of questions which are asked in, in UPSC exam and those are given in standard books. For example, the Krishna series, the, the uh, what you can say, uh, for different subjects there are different books, I will name them. So I think that as far as uh, uh, this, the books are concerned, you should go for those which you have studied uh, in the graduation subjects. And if, if you are doing something more, you should go for the standard books. But uh, if you, uh, once you have done with the concepts, it's, it only comes around uh, to solving as many questions as possible because that will give you speed. That will give you an idea actually how questions are solved in a limited time frame that with respect to the questions which are asked in exam. So for that, you can go for standard books and you should go for it. I also did questions from standard books. So as far as preparation is concerned, you should start reading for your own books and standard books. 
now when you read uh, it is not like you are reading some some history book or some arts book that you can read and analyze in your mind and you are getting with the concept in maths you need to understand the theorem and do not rest after that you should start doing as many questions as possible and without questions you will be like it will be there in your mind but after 3 4 months you will you will lost lose it all okay so you should do as many questions as possible and uh, as maths is all about formulas and short note making i i would prefer that you prepare a a small book a thin book will do and all those uh, right from subject 1 linear algebra to the last uh, subject of fluid dynamics in paper 2 you should make point wise notes of all the formulas small theorems uh, even the short uh, shortcut of proofs in your that copy i will promise you that only this thin copy will give you all the theorems and formulas for the whole syllabus and this will help you in that last moment when you have only half a day before the exam and you just have to flip over it you don't have time to do sums but when you have written those notes your sums will move around in your brain you will remember each and everything around the formulas so that should start from day 1 itself right right when you are you are start, starting to read you just start making small small notes of required formulas not just the whole book but make it as short as possible according to your capability and your understanding the whichever works for you so my this book was fine with my mains exam okay so you start making notes and get serious with the subject do it regularly so uh, and i was when i say regularly i mean that except for the two months before prelims that is if you have prelims in june so april and may you can give maths a break in the sense that because first thing first you have to clear your prelims so for the first the last two months you can give maths a break and apart from that each month each day you should give maths a required number of time so for me it was after dinner time 9 to 1 or 9:30 to 1 it was fixed that i i will do maths even if i am not feeling to do it and even if i am feeling that okay let's give it a break i will not give it a break because maths is something that if you lose one day you will eventually get, get a habit of losing one day in a week or two day in a week and that cycle will go off so jitna bhi aapka mann na kar raha ho maths padhne ka maths is a subject that requires your inner push मैथ्स कभी बहुत ही कम लोग होते हैं जिनका मैथ्स करने का मन करता है आई थिंक uh, कभी ना कभी ऐसा दिन आएगा कि आपको बहुत गुस्सा आएगा मैथ्स पर अरे मुझे नहीं करना बट यू शुड डू इट इवन वॉट यू कैन डू इज एट सच टाइम्स यू टेक अ इजी सब्जेक्ट इन मैथ्स इन विच देर इज वेरी मच सॉल्विंग देर इज नो बिग थ्योरम बट यू जस्ट हैव टू सॉल्व सो ओनली सो यू कैन से दैट वेन आई वॉज इन माई प्रिपरेशन एंड कभी कभी ऐसा होता था दैट आई वॉज नॉट फीलिंग गुड Uh, to do maths i used to pick up subjects like linear algebra optimization linear programming or integral calculus usme there are so many sums it opens your mind so you can try that when you are so much in mood to study you take up hard subjects like analysis linear uh, abstract algebra or uh, you can say your physics subjects if you are interested so that way it will balance out your your uh, preparation it will uh, reduce your time wastage on maths because any case you will have to do subjects you will have to cover the syllabus in maths uh, you cannot as uh, as you can say in any other subject as optional you cannot afford to lose uh, uh, lose out on syllabus you have pretty much time if you If you if you take three hours every day for maths, you will be able to complete the syllabus in eight to nine months at max. Even if you are somewhat slow in uh, learning, and eight to eleven months will do. So I think that it will be uh, very easy in a sense to cover up the subject. So I think that there is no option of uh, leaving things in the syllabus as far as completion is concerned. 
but i would also like to say that there are many uh, topics in maths syllabus which are of physics and uh, in paper 1 and paper 2 both there are one subject each of physics which are uh, a slight different from uh, what we used to study in maths if you have done maths honors like me or msc in mathematics in particular you might not be able to get hold of those subjects very strongly as compared to other subjects in the same paper so when i'm talking about paper 1 there is a section of physics subjects and in paper 2 it's fluid dynamics so they are hard to subjects and there are many people who are not comfortable with that what i would like to say is that you can uh, give your time to understand those subjects and if you are able to get hold on them it's just very good you can you can prepare your notes on the easy topics of those physics subjects in both the papers that will do but in case you are not able to understand physics topics because of your lack of hold on the subject and you are thinking that you are missing out on other subjects in the paper paper 1 or paper because of those physics subjects i would uh, prefer that you, uh, you you don't get too serious about those physics subjects you can be slightly lenient in your preparation in those particular subjects because i am saying this because i did it myself and what happens is that we tend to waste our time on that those subjects which we are not understanding well and we are we are very much scared of attempting those questions and we know that there are random questions which are asked in the exam so i think that you can cover the easy portions in those subjects and leave those subjects for the time being complete your syllabus strengthen your subjects which are strong which uh, which are there in hardcore maths strengthen them perfect them and then if you have time you can come back to those physics subjects solve questions from the standard books i think that will help help you in 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 not wasting your time keeping your mind stable and uh, doing 100% what you know and doing 70 to 80% what you don't so it is better to to strengthen what you know than to waste time in which you understand that you are not going to get it if you are getting it it is very crucial it is very good and you will be scoring high because questions will be asked from those portions it is it is your it is your luck it is your it is your what you can say choice of questions in the paper that will decide what questions you need to solve actually so there there can be options with where we, you can leave those physics questions so uh, there there will be time where you cannot leave those questions so it is up to you how you will back question in case you have not find these questions to table to to easy to answer i would say you will come you should complete your syllabus 100% but if if you are not able to understand certain questions you can leave them you can uh, prepare them 50% 40% in case some easy question is asked in 10 marks that you can cover but if 25 marks per, uh, questions are asked in a subject which are which you know that it is not uh, your type or your stronghold on you can go for some very very much asked which hold a major portion of the syllabus you can strengthen them if one or questions you can leave of 15 marks it is no big deal if you are doing the other 200 mark question paper uh, you know perfectly because that is what defines your preparation second is uh, the importance of text series in in maths in particular there are other subjects in which a text series are there for people uh, get to practice uh, answer writing with respect to gs so there are certain subjects that if you practice in gs you will get a hold of how to write uh, you know paragraph wise answers time management will come but in maths what happens is it's a completely new subject with respect to gs so you have to start reading two new new pages and uh, for that your gs writing answers will not help you in doing, doing math so that is what went wrong in my first attempt i skipped test series and i prepared the whole syllabus and i was like i will be able to do it 
and I practiced answer writing for GS. So what happened in exam room was I was not able to manage my entire time. So in that case, in paper one I typed, it went all bizarre, and I was able to attempt only 165 marks questions. And because of that, my paper two was also slightly affected, and I was able to attempt only 200 mark questions. And in that panic mood, my marks were around 94 in paper and 114 in paper two, and that was too bad. And I realized that because of uh, not enough practicing of test series or in a limited time frame, this happened. So in the second attempt, I made sure that I joined a good test series and that is all very needed for each maths optional aspirant because you will be able to understand concepts within a year or year and a half. You will be able to solve the questions which you do in books and if there is a slight understanding that you will be sol able to solve questions but when it is like 25 or 20 questions at a go in 3 hour time you need practice for actual time management with respect to the marks with respect to uh, the, the selection of questions what you have to do because there are 8 questions you have to do in any 5 and there are sections so you, you will get an idea as to how you will manage your time 